The following program is presented by the Metropolitan Library Service Agency. Welcome to All About Kids, a program focusing on the activities, services, and issues relating to children. We all remember those very special gifts we received when we were small. The books lovingly inscribed by parents, by a special aunt, a favorite friend. Books that usually became the basis of, a, of our very own library collection. How do parents choose from among the millions of books that are being published every year to select just the right thing for the special child in their lives? Today, Ellis Navy Youth Services Coordinator from the St. Paul Public Library will be talking with local bookstore owners about this subject. Today we're talking with uh, three local bookstore owners in the Twin Cities area about developing a personal library uh, for children and about some trends in retailing and some other thoughts on getting uh, books and children together. Uh, Michelle Poiré and Carol Erdahl are from the Red Balloon Bookshop in St. Paul. Welcome. Thank and Saul Westby is from the Bookhouse in Minneapolis. Welcome to you. I'd like to start by finding out what are children and, uh, and adults buying in the line of books these days? Do any of you have some thoughts on that? Well, I think in terms of the books that the children are buying, uh, we see a lot of the, um, those in the 8 to 12 year old range coming in and looking for books called the Babysitter's Club. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a series of books. And I think that's not unusual because many of us grew up reading series as well. And I think that's a, one phenomena that perhaps is a, a nostalgic one for parents sure. too. But there are many other books, but that's one of the things I think that we see. Mm -hmm. I start too. And even Sweet Valley Twins yeah. <laughs> enjoy that. And, uh, and also Animal Inn is another series that has been popular in our store with the young people in the age bracket that we've been talking about. But would you say it's mostly fiction? Um, that they're buying then fiction in series. Do you see children coming in for nonfiction items these days at all? Gee, we sell a lot of nonfiction. Mm -hmm. um, and it's bought uh, probably 80% by parents, but 20, mm -hmm. 20, 25% right. of the nonfiction is purchased by kids. The, and, the children um, come into the store and seem to prefer the nonfiction, but as Michelle said, the parents and grandparents are really loading up with the nonfiction, mm -hmm. which is very nice to see. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing, I think, is that there's so much good nonfiction being produced right now, especially in the area of biographies. And mm -hmm. the Newbery Award for That's 88, right. <coughs> excuse me, went to a nonfiction book, That's a right, photobiography Lincoln. of Lincoln. Right. And I think that whole area of biography is a marvelous way of, in a sense, it's like a series. You start reading about one famous person and you read another. Mm -hmm. And that's a good way to get children and good books together. Not that some of those series aren't so good, but it should be seen as an introduction and not the final. Sure, thing. sure. Uh, getting back to biography with the um, reprinting of the childhood of famous Americans, mm -hmm. we've seen an upsurge too <coughs> in the, for that a younger age bracket, mm -hmm. and uh, it's good to see. And the value books are very popular at our store, too. Uh, the biographies of different people, and then they also teach a little value along mm -hmm. with it. Do you uh, have a, a call for uh, biographies of women? and, and mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. Yeah. One day a woman came into the store and asked for a biography of Winston Churchill. <laughs> and I hunted and hunted, and I did not find anything. And I said, you know, Winston Churchill is not too big with the younger people today. So I said, how about Margaret Thatcher? Yes. <laughs> so she did take Margaret a Thatcher. A good alternative, yes. an example right. of getting the right book to the right person. Um, and around the holiday time, um, what 
are people buying a different kind of, of book than they do generally other times during the year, the kind of book you give to a child to, to keep forever and ever? I think Great. that's true. I think, generally speaking, when people are buying books as gifts at holiday time, they're willing to pay mm -hmm. a bit more money. And the many, many beautiful children's wow. picture books are the ones that really move, mm -hmm. or the classics. Macmillan has been doing the classics, um, Robinson Crusoe, mm -hmm. uh, The Yearling, in fine editions that are like $20 or so, but people are willing to spend that money. And those, are, I think, are investments. I think mm -hmm. there are some books that you want to invest in that you'll keep in your family. There are others, perhaps, that you're willing to buy in paper because there are more ephemeral mm -hmm. types of things. It's, I think, the beginning of building that personal mm -hmm. library. The artwork is such, it's the kind of thing that you'd like to have on your walls, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it, it's just overwhelming sometimes to see mm -hmm. all that beautiful artwork. I suppose that you have people who come in and they consider you the experts on uh, the best books to have in a personal library and maybe it's a grandparent or a parent who's wanting to start a personal library. What kind of advice do you give them? Uh, how do you go about communicating to them the, those right things that ought, one ought to have in a personal library? So well, I always like to ask what the child's interests are and, and then try to match up a book that would uh, that that child might mm -hmm. like on the basis of something else he's read. Also, a favorite author too is a good way. Like if a child has enjoyed a Scott O'Dell, like The Island of the Blue Dolphins, then try to go over to another O'Dell yeah. book so they get a sampling. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think one thing that I try to do too is while um, most grandparents will know the books that have been classics, mm -hmm. they're not as well uh, versed in the newer books for mm -hmm. children. And you know, it's an opportunity for you to, for for us to share mm -hmm. uh, some of the new books, like Goats, sure. that just came out, mm -hmm. uh, the first uh, novel like that by Cole. Mm -hmm. And most parents would not have read that or had any knowledge mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. And so I think of us not only in providing the books that they know about, but as as sharing with them some of the many fine new books mm -hmm. that are being written. Or the wonderful uh, Newberry Honor book, Hatchet. <coughs> yes, oh, you great. Just, by our own oh, Gary Paulson. Yes, right. yes. yes. and you, just, uh, you, know, you, you can just relate that story in a very short time, you're a little uh, smattering of it, mm -hmm. and they're, they're intrigued with it. Yeah. And usually mm -hmm. they'll want to buy Hatchet for a, yep. for for a, a young man yes. especially. Uh, then you almost see yourself as doing mini book talks, I suppose, to, yeah, to parents sure. and people who are <laughs> many, coming. Many, many during yes. the day. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, uh, how do you think a person should go about deciding if, if a book is something they might want to check out of the library or buy for their, um, for their own personal library at home? Um, do you have some thoughts on that? Sometimes I will say you should check out the library. If somebody wants something in particular on a particular subject that um, we're, we don't have enough of in the store, I'll send them to the library mm -hmm. to do their choosing and then they can come back to the bookstore and we'll special order what are their choice. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I think that's true. I think another thing is that many parents will come to the, uh, to the store saying, we've checked this out of the library so many times yes. now that we've decided we should buy it. Right. Uh, certainly that is one measure of which book you should buy sure. for at home. I think another one is, too, that um, with some of the classics like Goodnight Moon, mm -hmm. which is a marvelous book, and if you're just beginning your family, uh, you know, it will go through many children, and it's better to have that in the hardcover. I mean, paperbacks are marvelous, and I yeah. certainly would uh -huh. not discourage their purchase, but I think for a book that lasts, or one that you're, you're you know, especially sure that you want to keep it, then <laughs> it's, it's worth paying. The Going through the uh, several children with Goodnight Moon often requires <clears throat> Several copies. Yes, we have to have one <laughs> yes, in our house. Yes, yes. And then when the kids get older, then they fight over who gets to keep That's it when right. they move out. Right. We've had some of those things uh -huh. going on at our house yes. as the the older children move out. Well, this was mine. Oh no, it was mine. Uh -huh. And it's really yes. kind of fun, you know, yeah. because then you realize how important those books were to your children. Yeah. Maybe it would be a good idea for parents to put a book plate 
in each book as it is presented to a child and that would alleviate this and that child yeah. would get the book when they move out. You know, we have a number in our house of, of books that I, I noticed the other day have X's or crossed out the original name that was in there. Someone else who thought it was <laughs> yes. one they wanted in the end crossed out the other yeah. person's name oh, and wrote sure. their <laughs> theirs in. Um, have you seen some changes maybe in the last five years in the area of children's book publishing that particularly stand out? One thing that I've noticed uh, in just the two and a half years that we've been in business is the uh, proliferation of uh, black literature, mm -hmm. uh, uh, children's literature about black people. And this is a wonderful trend. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it, there, I feel that there wasn't nearly as much two and a half years ago as there is now. I don't know how you girls feel yeah, about sure. that. I think that's true. Uh -huh. I think you mentioned that too. Combined with that is the whole, uh, in terms of books for the very young, is that whole um, innovation of the board book. Uh -huh. uh, that you know people used to buy the cloth books, uh -huh. but the board book, that technology has superseded mm -hmm. cloth books. And the Oxenberry series, which was number one on the children's right. bestseller list, you know that's another new thing that that's Publishers right. Weekly has just started publishing a children's bestseller. Mm -hmm. And in the baby books, the Oxenberry series of board books, Tickle Tickle, Clap mm -hmm. Hands, All Fall Down, shows multi-ethnic children. Yes. And I think it's just a beautiful set of books. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and uh, so many are coming in now and asking for books with Asian children yes. because of the <clears throat> adoptions and so on that yes. are taking place. And it is so wonderful to have those now yeah. that mm -hmm. you can show them. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy before. No. And, and also we do have a very large population of, of Southeast Asian people That's in the right. Twin Cities yes. area. Mm -hmm. And I know it has been very difficult for yes. us to, to find, find material right. uh, showing those children mm -hmm. and other mm -hmm. Oriental children in the illustrations. Something that I've noticed recently is the number of nonfiction books that now show cross-cultural children. It seemed to me that for a few years it was much easier to find um, cross-cultural representation mm -hmm. in the fiction books than it was in the nonfiction yes. books, and now I'm That's seeing true. that more and more. Especially I noticed the other day in the Let's Read and Find Out Science series that coming yes. out yes. Uh, with more of those too. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that Let's Read and Find Out series. That's another trend that the publishers are now reissuing mm -hmm. good titles that have been out of print or that have been become dated. Mm -hmm. And we see many, many, especially in the paperbacks, of books that we've not been able to have. And mm -hmm. part of that is due to that California initiative, sure. which in California where the um, State Department decided that they wanted these books for use in their school reading program. And so the publishers then reissued these books. And that's been a great boon, I think, to us yes. in, in mm -hmm. terms of having these marvelous books yes. available. Yes. As you talk about Let's Read and Find Out, mm -hmm. they come in a book and cassette set as well as individually. And that's another trend that's really taken mm -hmm. off in the last yes. couple of years, are book and cassette mm -hmm. sets, where the, the book is read aloud, um, sometimes with beeps for page turns. Mm -hmm. um, I know and original music. And they're widely circulated in, in the libraries sure. in the Twin yes. Cities area, and they're just so popular they we can hardly keep uh -huh. them in. Uh -huh. um, I, I'm wondering about the book sort of as it's seen as a toy. I've seen uh, the little board <laughs> books with wheels on yeah. them or, or yeah. holes in them to yes. stick your finger through. Or, uh, yes, yeah. yes, that's right. they're very popular in the, the bookstores. Fast stores rolling as well. uh, yeah. school yeah. bus and yeah. tough trucks and work trucks yeah. and so on have been selling. At a good pace. Yeah. <laughs> one who wants to combine play with reading. The pop up. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I know one thing that um, is a concern to librarians, and we always say that uh, better children are reading than what they're reading. But um, I know in libraries we have kind of a, a tug of war. There's on the one hand uh, librarians who feel that the quality is what mm -hmm. we should go for and children should be introduced mm -hmm. to the finest and the best. And on the other hand, do the children really want to read the finest and best? Yes. And in a bookshop uh, situation too, I'm sure um, you have to sell some schlock, some maybe not so good, along with the, f the finer, really But there's excellent. a difference between 
uh, good uh, humor and poor humor and that sure. sort of thing too. And uh, and you can usually motivate them through like uh, books on humor or uh, you know knock knock jokes or mm -hmm. almost anything or a very nice sports books and uh, like for the recalcitrant uh, boy who uh, reluctant read, reader. <laughs> that's right. Yes. Right. I think another thing is that uh, I know in our shop we each have our own favorite kinds of uh, book. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, very, I'm very much interested in fantasy mm -hmm. and to be able to share with someone uh, like the um, Clark's book, The Return of the Twelves, mm -hmm. or Tom's Midnight Garden. Some of these um, that were originally written in Britain and are now available here, you know, you can move from a very simple a sci-fi thing, some of the Jane Yolen's I Can Reads, mm -hmm. and then get into the fantasy. And I think it's the personalities that are there that can kind of help to move those things that we think are quality literature by showing people. Many of them don't know. I mean, that's the one thing I think so many times parents come and they really come seeking, and I think we mm -hmm. owe it to them to share and to let them know what's there. That's right. Yeah. Well, and to make value judgments about what we put in the store. Yes. There are a lot of books we don't buy. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> that's and mm -hmm. uh, uh, because we're interested in people having a place where they can come to find quality chosen mm -hmm. th uh, books that have been chosen with a, a care. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so that a child can have a variety of illustrations, a variety of uh, styles in their personal library so that they have the experience w from which to draw their mm -hmm. own favorites. Sure, right. And I can see that that's important. It's a problem, I think, right. when a parent decides mm -hmm. that yep. their child's only going to have um, right. detailed illustration and have nothing that is uh, avant-garde. Or, sure. You know, so uh, There needs to be a balance. There needs to be a balance. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, and in all genres. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. I think that's true. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that uh, what is purchased affects what is published, or uh, what is published really affects what is purchased these days? <laughs> <laughs> Oranges and apples. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I know. Uh, in, across the road. Yeah, there are a lot of markets besides children's bookstores. That's right. Right. Who um, distribute a lot of books that a children's bookstore might pass on. Uh -huh. So I have noticed that um, in the library setting, for many years we, we were just lacking in the good nonfiction materials, and it seemed that suddenly there was a greater demand, uh, particularly in nonfiction uh, materials for um, preschoolers, mm -hmm. um, the daycare center that's doing yeah. the, mm -hmm. the unit on birds or the seasons, whatever, now is coming to us and saying, you know, we need 20 books mm -hmm. on this particular yeah. topic. And so we, the librarians are, are more aware of this and are saying to publishers, we need more. And I, yeah. I really am seeing more. Well, yes. They're saying the same thing. Yes. They come right. to us and ask, but, you know, what are the spots? One thing that um, is beginning to fill is that difficult area for children who are reading but they're you know first and second grade readers mm -hmm. there's so little available and that's kind mm -hmm. of we find that in libraries right. that's yeah. uh, being addressed now by publishers mm -hmm. and it's interesting too we, we laugh so uproariously about this is the fact that uh, you get one publisher will have a book on seasons, and now as we've been buying, <laughs> yeah, yeah. every publisher has <laughs> yeah, a book on seasons. And they said, way. "Did you all get together and decide this, uh -huh. or how does yeah. it happen?" Yeah. Well, I think if they see something succeeds, then they uh -huh. all kind of do uh -huh. the same thing, or they feel those trends or pressures themselves. Uh -huh. And in some ways, that's fine because mm -hmm. seasons is very basic sure. in a preschool mm -hmm. and kindergarten sure. uh, curriculum. Mm -hmm. But it is kind of humorous because yes. I think that it <laughs> follows in other areas. You mentioned the nursery schools. It would be interesting to do a study as to uh, what the percentage uh, in the increase has mm -hmm. been in nursery schools, say from 20 years ago to now. Oh, it's and, very uh, dramatic. Yeah, it's just dramatic. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, these uh, operations need books. And so mm -hmm. I think the publishers have been answering some of the demands. I know so often uh, children who are in uh, child care situations really maybe only get a chance to meet the library um, or meet books through the child care situation. Right. A, a provider who is um, uh, 
really attuned to the the importance of you know, getting books yes. and the child together at a very young age. Do you have parents of, of uh, infants or parents who are about to give birth who come in and say we're starting oh, this library for our, our young one? Mm -hmm. That's very that one of the nice things is that we had I had a young man come in the other day and he was buying Goodnight Moon or Pat the Buddy, one of those. Uh -huh. And he said, "My, we just found out my wife is pregnant. He was planning ahead He's planning already. Ahead, yeah. Well, Jim Trulia said you should read to them in the womb. Yeah, so that's right. that might right. be a good idea. Yeah, I agree. Um, besides the sale of, of books, carefully selected and kind of... Uh, very caring thought you give to, to a book you suggest to to a, a customer. Do you offer other services, Solve, in your store for Well, yes, and we have story hours on Wednesdays mm -hmm. and on Saturdays. It seems like a good time to have sure. them, as I know the girls over there do too. And uh, oh, we have different activities. Mm -hmm. uh, Last week we had, or a couple weeks ago I should say, we had book reviews. The kids had written book reviews out at home and they came and shared them with the other children. And we've had authors, we've had puppet shows and, and other activities sure. on Saturdays usually. Sure. What about at uh, the Red Balloon? Well, we try to do much the same, I uh -huh. think. Those uh, are a program. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Sure. Decide a program for the season. Right. And one of the things that I think, in addition to having authors and story times and things in the in the store, is that uh, I've appreciated, and Michelle has too, the opportunities that we have to go and speak to, like to parenting groups, and uh, I'm a librarian yes, as well, I, so yes. that it kind of uh, <laughs> sure. keeps me in touch mm -hmm. with that library part mm -hmm. of the the book scene, and uh, that has been a marvelous way, I think, yeah. for us, in terms of reaching parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do try to provide that, and I do. Um, we do visit the uh, children's hospitals mm -hmm. with stories sometimes when we are invited, and mm -hmm. and things like we, that. We we've done the same thing. Mm -hmm. We uh, in uh, we've had a large call for uh, speaking at nursery school parent groups mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, and it's it's lots of fun yeah. and uh, to have this interchange with parents and uh, parents of today are very discerning because yes. of their educational levels and so on. And uh, this is much appreciated, and many of them know exactly what they want when they come into the store. I'm sure. Well, now, uh, Saul, if if a parent does come into mm -hmm. the store and says, uh, "I want the best book to give to my preschooler," uh, what what would be maybe your your best choice? What would be your suggestion for that one book that stands out in your mind? Oh, I. Hard question. <laughs> it's a hard question because there are so many. I guess when I first started selling books, I fell in love with Goodnight Moon like everyone else mm -hmm. did. Another favorite of mine was Each Peach Pear Plum. Yes. And uh, for a, just a little bit older, maybe A House is a House, mm -hmm. which, but any of those. And then, uh, from or The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Oh. And from Wonderful. there, uh, then the next time the person comes in, you say, well, do you have thus and thus and yes. thus? Yes, okay, you've been here before. Yeah. So <laughs> then we go on to from yeah, there. But yeah. there are some basic books that sure. should be in every child's library. Sure. What about uh, a little bit older, maybe? Uh, uh, first through fourth or fifth or sixth grade, have you got some, that one that in your mind is, or two or three that you think are... A five, six, and seven-year-olds, I think Bill Pete is a really good mm -hmm. author. Mm -hmm. And it depends on the child which one you would pick. And, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, mm -hmm. he's available in paperback now. That's right. uh -huh. so, um, and I think it's fun to introduce them to Arnold Lobel and the Frog yeah. and Toad series and, yeah. and the Little Bear. And, and Nancy Carlson's books are very mm -hmm. popular. Oh, yeah, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. And the beginning readers just mm -hmm. all the way through are... are mm -hmm. Good to introduce mm -hmm. them to when the, they can read. read alone. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I think the whole uh, concept that reading aloud is probably one of the best gifts yeah. that we can can give a child uh, is something that we all really need to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. That sharing of the one-on-one -on -one reading. I, I just don't, excuse mm -hmm. me. I don't know if you girls carry the American Girl collection. Do you? Mm -hmm. yes, do you do? do. Okay, those have just skyrocketed in our store. 
Yeah, and they're very uh, popular. They're very popular. Yeah. They're high quality paperback books with beautiful illustrations. And in the back, uh, they give a, a, a social b uh, background, background of the period of time. These three girls were all 10 years old in different periods in history, 1854 and 1904 and 1944. And then the first book for each girl is an introductory book. It's Meet Molly, Meet Samantha. Great meet. for the yes, age. Yes, right. For, for like 7 to 10 sure. or 11. Good. Yeah. And then each girl has now four books written mm -hmm. about her. And they plan to come out Good with still more. Thank they you so much. Good ones. Thank you so much for all of your suggestions, yeah. and uh, we'll look forward to stopping in your shop. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks to our guests today, especially Alice Navy from the St. Paul Public Library. Do check out the Red Balloon Bookshop, the Bookhouse Bookstore, and the other fine children's book departments in local bookstores. The goats in this novel are two 13-year-olds, Laura and Howie. They are outcasts. I'm socially retired for my age, she said with a certain dignity. Yeah, me too. They are stripped of their clothes and marooned on an island overnight by their fellow campers. It's supposed to be a joke, but Laura and Howie don't see it that way. They escape from the island and resolve never to go back to face the ridicule of their peers. Instead, they begin an aimless journey, journey living from moment to moment. They break into a summer cottage and steal some food and clothes, and then they call Laura's mother. Mrs. Golden, having received too many calls for help in the past, fails to hear the urgency in her daughter's voice. She'll wait until parents day to come and talk with Laura. On the run, they meet many different kinds of people, some kind, some cruel. A group of inner city black kids from another camp befriend them. A cleaning lady from a motel accuses them of inappropriate behavior and a sheriff in plain clothes frightens them. In the beginning, Laura and Howie cling to each other out of necessity, but their relationship gradually turns to friendship and mutual respect. They discover their own inner strengths and resources. I quote from the book, Her face was close to his. He could smell her breath. It didn't smell like flowers or anything familiar. It was a new kind of smell, and it was both pleasant and alarming. He decided he liked it. He was surprised, too, at how warm she was. When you don't touch people very often, you forget that they really are warm. This is a powerful adventure novel. There are many layers to the goats. Laura and Howie's physical journey is a suspenseful one. Their psychological journey from social retards to whole be beings is a gratifying one. Anita Sylvie, in her editorial in the January-February issue of Hornbook magazine, sums up the feelings of the goats. She writes, It is wonderful to see a children's book that affirms the individual and yet speaks of togetherness and bonding. It is exciting to find a book of this quality which makes us think and argue and debate again about what makes a good children's book. The publication of a novel like The Goat signifies that we are still creating children's books that affirm the human spirit and the ability of the individual to see above adversity. Wendy Woodfield, children's librarian from the Hopkins Community Library, reviewing Goats by Brock Cole. Do join us again for All About Kids.
This has been a presentation of Hennepin County Library in conjunction with the Twin Cities Metropolitan Library Service Agency.